you know, the immigrants, when they came, most of them didn't have much when they came, so they had a very good work ethic, a strong sense of family, and just the, the desire to do well. Most of my family and most of the people in this area, actually, are from the northern, from the mountainous part of Greece. So they naturally just gravitated when they came to an area that looked kind of like home. My mother's first husband started here. It was all sheep. They run two to 3,000 sheep. He died in 1948. My mother went back in 1950 to Greece, married my father, and then came over. So my dad had like 15 or 20 cows. Of course, they were all named and everything else too, but mostly from a milk cow. I got interested in the cattle. Then I got back in 1978 and we started to grow the cow herd. My yaya, my grandma, she was, she was like a, a fierce negotiator and a uh, and like I said, had a lot of drive and tough. And my papu was more of a philosopher and a thinker and uh, like I said, he's a real well-educated man. I can see it in my dad and I saw it in his parents about just the, the pride that they take in their work and you kind of see that through the Greek culture as well. It's just everybody's really prideful on their work and prideful of what they are as a family and keeping that tight-knit family and keeping the tradition alive and you know and and that's you know cooking lambs on the spit and that's you know going to church and that's it's all those things tied into it and, and it's the ranch life and it's so it's 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 pretty cool to see that my, my I definitely see my father trying to carry on those traditions as well and and on the business side too you know I see you know, how my, my grandmother and how they ran their business, I can see that in my father and he's, you know, he's a, she's a really good businessman and he's passed that down to me and George as well. My wife was a second generation, her parents were first generation, she was second generation, but also came from immigrant parents. She always said, if you want, if you want your children to do well and to be following your footsteps, you know, to take over your business, you have to take them with you at an early age. And then when you take them with them, you don't, you don't always make it miserable for them. Like I said, the business is not, it's not always a fun business. You have to put up with heat and dust. It's dusty and there's droughts and bad storms. And freezing cold and wind and snow. And You're out there riding in the dust and wind all day or it snows on you and you don't have a coat. Bad calving season, bad labor. You get thrown down off a horse and it hurts. Bad market. You brought the wrong boots. If you transmit that to your kids, that it's a miserable life, they're not going to come back. But like the accomplishment of uh, like, just like Brandon today or, you know, getting the cattle work is just like, it's one of those feelings that you can't replace. And that's what we got as a young kid too, from going with our dad or our mom or whatever be all the time, putting out salt, and rounding up cows or, you know, so it just kind of, it kind of gets in your blood and it kind of just stays there, you know? So we're lucky enough to be here and at this point to grow into another generation. This is my mom's best friend, my papu, my mom's dad. I think that's, I think that's Angelo right there, and that's my mom with her smile. It shows off her, how vibrant she was in and, and, and with my papu too. When my father really started to, to grow this operation, he had a vision that, that nobody else really saw. He had a vision of cattle and artificial insemination and kind of where the industry would go, you know, and we started that way back then. He's always had a really, you know, mechanical mind and he likes to put stuff on paper and he can think it out and he's really good at designing things and, and you know, that goes from houses to corrals to just pretty much everything. The thing is about a corral, you have to have a kind of no cow psychology to build a good one. But you, when you run as many cattle as we do, you gotta work efficiently. Cattle usually like to go in a circle or they like to go back to where they came from. So we try to look at the pasture and try to figure out how they like to, if they like to go uphill or downhill or where they like to congregate in certain corners. And so now I've kind of stepped into that too as, as far as I, I like to draw and I like to design stuff too, kind of like he does. And so, and it's pretty impressive when you sit back and you look at all the trails and all the systems and you see, you know, the and how they just keep growing. You know, we kind of never stop. And that's kind of our motto is always forward. Always striving to be better. I mean, I think that's a trait 
from Mayaya or, you know, even the ancestors came in over from Greece, always striving for something better. And that's what he was doing in the cow side of it. You know, me and George, are, are, we're millennials. We're born in a different generation, obviously. And so we have different, you know, things and different images that we want this place to go and places we want this, you know, business to grow. and. And that doesn't absolutely line up exactly with, you know, what our father or what our grandfathers have done. And me, being 65 year old, years old, and turning over a lot of this stuff to my children, I've had a little problem in transition sometimes, but I'm adjusting. It's hard to turn over. I, I remember my dad thought I was completely crazy when we, we started buying lots of cattle. But he just transitioned and he had to kind of adjust to some of the things that I was doing. At the same time, we have that in our genes and our blood, just like they did. They, we have the business sense like they did, but now it's up to us to change it so we don't go out of business. You know, leading by example is a, another huge principle. You know, when you're raising a family or children. Like I said, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have, I mean, usually you just sell out. What are you gonna do, you get old? You can't do it. You can only do it so long. More of the wealthier people, they never return back to the really the family, the actual people that work, that own it and work it. With time, there's going to be more, less and less people like that. But no, I'm real fortunate that my children have taken over, have taken over those roles. But like I said, the important thing is to lead by example, and I hope I've been a good example.